Whatever else you do, don't move. We will shortly introduce you to our best guest yet. He's big. Oh, he's big. And I don't mean big. I mean big. We spoke to him. Yes, but he's not. I mean, he's... No, I don't mean tall. We spoke to him last wide. night and there was just a moment I thought we were going to get something really special <laughs> when there was a hint of a duet <laughs> between our guest and our co-host. It was fantastic. Nearly. We nearly fantastic. got it. Very briefly, okay? Yeah. Um, uh, playing without fans is sadder than dancing with your own sister, says Luis Enrique. Playing without fans <laughs> is sadder than dancing with your own sister. I think he's got a point. Well, I don't know, but that's, that's a, bit, a bit harsh. <laughs> I have to say. Jack Grealish becomes the latest Premier League player to spash out on a £25,000 guard dog. This is after Deli Alley's problems, which of course uh, were, were most unpalatable. Yeah, the yeah. boys are now buying from, from this company, Chaperone K9. £25,000. Wow. Do you know what that reminded me of? Wow. Many years ago, <laughs> um, uh, Kenny Dalgleish, mm -hmm. it was, who, who said to me, you should get yourself a big dog uh -huh. for the family. So when you're away, it barks, makes a lot of noise. Yes. And that puts people off. <laughs> And I think to a large degree he was right. That's but true, it, yeah. It was <laughs> he, <laughs> on. he had two Alsatians himself. Right. And one got nicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a problem then. If your dog's that friendly. I shouldn't laugh because no, shouldn't. it was devastating for the family. Yeah. But the fact that he had <laughs> two car dogs full of good advice and he's got stolen. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, but I mean, that's, that's, that's the problem the modern day footballer has. Yes. He is a major oh, target. Major target. This I knew would appeal to you, Gennaro Gattuso. When I lost a match, I broke down in frustration. Today, players lose, take a selfie and put it on the internet. What would Vince Lombardi say below it? Did you see that bit? Uh, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. Vince Lombardi. Jordan Ive, at one time, Bournemouth's costliest yeah. purchase. And 15 by the way, million. not long ago. He's, four years ago, he's about to walk away for nothing. In fact, do you know what? After, if I was Eddie Howe, I'd give him 15 mil to go. No, they're, they're letting him go. Yeah. His contract's just up. Just say thank you. Thank just, you very much. He's gone. Out. Well, There's the keys to my car. It's a huge it's You a drive huge that wherever fall. you like. This young kid, he, he was so well thought of when he went to Bournemouth, Richard. I think, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody, I think Liverpool put a buyback clause in because they thought he was going to reach heights that yeah. maybe not with them just They want then, to renegotiate that. But they wanted to have the ability to be yeah. first yeah. to buy him back. Let's just say they're not exercising that no, buyback. No, they're, they're really good. And I know he's had trouble, and we do wish him well, mm -hmm. but it's been a very expensive waste of uh, four years. Yeah. Manchester United's debts soar by 127 million to 429. You made a good point to me when I arrived in the Grey Lounge this morning, which is... I, I wonder, with UEFA and financial fair play, how can a club, like the same city, across the city, Manchester City, who run their business mm -hmm. on without debt... Um, they don't spend huge money on transfers. They're one of the I don't think they've got the record for having signed the most expensive anything. No, they haven't. They haven't. Back, so they, they run a business, I guess, the way you'd want it run. Mm -hmm. And yet they get punished, or are yep. about to be punished. And Manchester United continually, year on year, run nearly a half a billion pound debt. Yes. And that's okay. A uh, double delight, Leeds and West Brom will be promoted to the Premier League if the season in the Championship cannot be finished, so say the EFL. Um, what this article and no other article I've read on this subject says is that the Premier League have confirmed that they will do that. Have they? They haven't. Oh, they haven't? The EFL have said, we'll send two up. The Premier League have not yet said, we agree. Which yeah, because the Premier League intend to play out, don't they? That's why. Um, At the moment. EFL clubs fear curtailing the seasons in League 1 and 2 will lead to a a bit of a, a meltdown in the championship and there's talk of a breakaway. Premier League 2. I first heard that story in yes, 1992. Yes, yes, Premier League are not going to dilute what they've got. You don't think so? The best league in the world. Do you not think that for a second tier? Why? Why would you do that? But what could they not... Could the championship... Let, let me just... You tell me because you're more about the uh, legalities of all this. Could the, the championship, Richard, not do what Division 1 did in 1992? Yeah, of say, course they say could. Say to the EFL, of course they we're could. out... Of course, and these clubs, yes, are we're going to form 20 or 24 shareholders. Well, I think they again. can because you, 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 you do need a percentage from the EFL to be able to uh, run that through, don't right. you? Far greater than the one that operates in the Premier League, yes. or restrictive, I should say. But yes, I think they could. But, but I, don't, I don't believe the Premier League wants a no, second tier. But if I, again, I, I think I'm right. What the Championship will look at and say, hold on a minute, we've got the Premier League, mm. La Liga, mm -hmm. Serie A, yep. and the Bundesliga. The fifth 
best supported league, I think, in the world Correct. You is a right. championship. Yes. Better in France, better in um, yes. Holland, better in all these countries. So surely they've got a bargaining chip there. I think they probably have, and I think the world is, as, as I've said many times during this break, mm. uh, uh, break Andy, the world's going to be very different yes, in every is. respect when we come back. A yeah. uh, couple of things, I, I talked about um, scanning, we're not going to get the chance to do that today, we'll have to mm. push it back again. What is it? We'll explain when finally we get round to being able to talk about it. But we can ask Andy for his three law changes, Ooh. which a week ago I said we'd do last Monday, and again we got a little busy and had to push that down the track. So three law changes. Yeah, first of all, let me see. I think the game's in pretty good health. Right. I've always thought that. I've always thought the laws of the game that have stood the test of time for well over 100 years are pretty good. Right. So my law changes would be, one will never happen, I'm sad to say, yep. VAR, yep. I'd, I'd get rid because it was brought in to, make, right. the, I'd get rid. to, get, to make the game better, to, to, to make it 100% right of a decision, to take all argument away, um, <laughs> to clear up everything. It's done anything but. It's muddied the waters more than ever. Okay. I would get rid of that. Two, Two I, would, I would stop extra time and cup ties. Yes. Oh, yes. yes no yes, more. Yes, I'm with you. Yep. In an era yep. when we're saying, let's and protect replays? players. Mm, see, no. Oh, yes. That's what I mean. Uh, yeah, Re extra time straight to penalties. Agreed. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. You get 90 minutes to yes. do your stuff. If you don't do it, straight to penalties. Fine. And then either when we're trying to protect players, not have them play so much, why put tired players through another 30 minutes? Couldn't agree no more. No need. So I'd, and, and nine times out of ten, the extra time's hopeless anyway. Three. And three would be. What was my third one again? Do you want to think about it? While no. I... Um, I've, I've got it. I've got it. It's no. Obviously significant. Tied. No, I wrote them down as well. <laughs> VAR. You yeah, haven't got it. Have. I'm going to change one of mine. What was I, yours? I, I said, um, I, if you remember, I said uh, no subs after 90 minutes. Yeah. Um, take penalties at both ends. Yeah, got when, that. When, when you get to that point in, in big international matches. So there's no advantage or disadvantage depending upon which side is chosen. Uh, and I also said that I'd, I'd stop players coming off the pitch um, after treatment which I think is, is no bad thing. But I'm going to change that because it's my bat and my ball. It was yeah. my idea. Yeah. Remember that when you used to play? Oh, yeah, yeah, my ball. I'm not out. Oh, yeah, it's my ball. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm going in there. <laughs> um, I'm, I would prefer, if, if, you're, if you're fouled in the box, and this is to stop people I know diving, what you're going to say. If you're fouled in the box, and I remember Warren Barton doing this to us at Coventry years ago, he almost dived out of the stadium. Warren Barton would not have taken the penalty that resulted. Shearer did and cracked it in. If you are fouled in the box, you've got to stand up and you've got to take the penalty. Well, if it's handball. That's neutral. You can nominate. You can nominate your penalty taker. But it would keep people on their feet because too many players, like you, did not want to put the ball on the spot. It would have, you, you would not have gone over because you knew you weren't but taking what, the pen. But what if you get tripped? And you're not going over. Well, if you get tripped, that's fine, but it, it, it stops people diving. No, well, maybe, no maybe. if you're fouled. You're still, still if you're fouled. Yeah. I've yeah. got my third one anyway. Gone. And I would abandon away goals counting double in the European 100%. trophies. 100%. Oh, uh, why? Don't Let need us it anymore. introduce you to our guest. So, Sir Roderick David Stewart, CBE, thank you very much for joining David. Andy and myself. Did you say David? Yes. David's his name. Yes. yes. I've never known him. His middle name is David. I've known him well, all these years. We've all learned something and David. the show's barely started. Well, David, David Stewart, excellent. We Davies on. <laughs> Come on, lads, get on with it. <laughs> Come on, lads, get on with it. You will appreciate, Rod, if I may be so familiar, that it, it's been a great week for you, but not so much a good week for my friend here. So please go easy. Yeah, please. Fine, right, I'll try. But you Thank saw you, it Rod. coming, didn't you, Andy? Um, well, I have to say, Rod, I don't oh, know about I you, but I thought, no, I actually thought up until the New Year break, the Christmas break, I thought it was a brilliant title chase. I thought the two teams were neck and neck and Rangers were playing really well. And I thought, well, for the first time in many years, we're going to get a title race. But much like last Christmas, I don't know what happened to Rangers after this, the, the winter break. We've just, we just fell away and you guys have just well, galloped away with it. As, as uh, Michael Lustig said that in an interview, he said, we always wait for Rangers to, to start fading. <laughs> okay, stop and that's it. That's what happened. Oh, no, stop yeah, it. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Funnily uh, enough, uh, you, you, that, that okay, did get a mention. <laughs> our, our intermediary uh, who helped set this up did mention to me that it's worth pointing out that you've not been able to get your hair cut for how long? Three months? Well, at least three months, yeah. It hasn't been this long since 1973. 
It doesn't, no. <laughs> Me too, Rod. I've had terrible trouble getting mine cut as well. <laughs> Other than that, how has lockdown I been? You had a barnet, Andy. I know, a long time ago, Rod. A long <laughs> time ago. How's you it got been? Your one camera in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> How's lockdown been, Rod? What have you been up to? Well, um, you know, we have a we have a gorgeous house here, and um, we're all so lucky. I have a lovely astroturf football pitch, an indoor oh, pool, wow. a beautiful gym and lawn. So, but the most important thing is I've got um, my uh, four of my eight children here. So uh, oh, it's been wonderful to spend time with them, and my gorgeous wife is looking after me, but. You know, I do miss going to the pub. Something so simple as going to the pub. Yeah. Especially on a night like this when it's hot. And something as simple as watching football? Oh, yeah. Well, that goes without saying. You know, I'm just watching uh, Celtic reruns at the moment. Beating Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's not fair. I tell you, I knew this was a bad idea when it, when it was flagged up. I'm going to get some stick, I thought to myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it would be the same the other way around. Uh, of course, right. How close were you to being a professional footballer? Uh, when I, you know, when I was younger, I used to boast about it. I was a good player. I, I had trials for Brentford, but um, it was about the same time as I fell in love with rock and roll. And rock and roll took over. You know, I sat by the phone waiting for them to call and... But they never did, so I didn't even respond. They didn't want me. This was Brentford, who are doing really well now. Yes, they are. Do you know what, Rod? Let me ask you. If, if you could have been as good a footballer as you've been a rock star, which is pretty sensational, Very much. would you have swapped professions? No, not in a million years. No. You know, I'm, I'm 75 now. I'm still enjoying it. Wow. Um, still making records. I had a number yeah. one album this, this past year. So, uh, you know, in my football days would have been all over. Is there in a, my is manage, management days would have been over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there a piece of all of the things you've done that you would give away to, to exchange for something of a sports nature that you might like to have achieved? Well, how about, can I, could I, could, if, if I could give something away, could I go back in time? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I would give away a dozen of my platinum discs to be able to see the Wembley Wizards beat England 5-2 at Wembley in 1928. And my dad was at that game. <laughs> was he really? Was he really? What's wow. he told you about that game? <laughs> What's he told you about that game? Um, well, he's, he's long gone now, my dad, but uh, he, he, he said that one pass from Jackson went all the way across the pitch uh, and every player removed the legs. It's hard to believe. But <laughs> yeah, it's folklore, you know. Love so, it. So, did were you there in '67 then, Mr. Stewart, at Wembley? Uh, no, '67. My brother was. I was doing was a gig he? with Jeff Beck. Oh, yeah, of my course brother you were. was. Yeah. But I was there for '57. <laughs> I was actually photographed on the pitch. Oh, How do you like your football? Are you? Are you a man that likes your football served the way that Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool do, or? Would you prefer to see it played the way that Guardiola and Manchester City do? Oh, they're both superb managers and superb teams, either way. Um, I mean, I, I love what City do with the way they play out the back. I think they play out the back better than anybody. Mm. Uh, I love Klopp's speed from going from defence to um, into attack. But they're two great teams. I wanted to introduce you, Rod, with, with our anthem, um, which is out here and has been for the last seven years, Purple Heather. When we have a good night, a very late night, we tend to finish with two or three renditions, but um, I was told couldn't for commercial reasons. But uh, <laughs> the reason I mention that is the video that's with it catches you in the garden. Left foot, right foot, which surprised me a little. Do you have a preference when you play? <laughs> which side is the strongest? Just the one. Just the one. Just the right foot. Just but I was right. out with my, uh, yeah, I was out with my uh, six, seven-year-old son this morning. I wouldn't let him kick. Didn't even let him put a left boot, a right boot on. I said, you have to kick with your left. <laughs> Kept him going and on and on and on. And he's getting the hang of it. Good luck. What were you, what were you right as a player? What position? Uh, well, I started off, you know, in uh, yeah, what we used to call half-back line. 
Yeah. Then I went back to uh, fullback, and then I was a St John's ambulance behind the <laughs> behind the goal. <laughs> <laughs> it's also come to my attention. No, I was never, you... never attacking player, but my, oh. my best was uh, an advanced winger when I was allowed to go over the halfway line. Oh, you should have been a front man, Rod. You should have been a centre forward. That was you. It was made for you. You think so? <laughs> oh, well, made for you. Absolutely. <laughs> it is, uh, it is my boys now. Can you see that? Yeah. This is my Celtic boys under 10. Oh, well done. Um, unbeaten. There's my son's in there somewhere. Brilliant. That must oh, make you sick, see. Andy. <laughs> Not at all. Listen, you know me, Rod, all for promoting the youth of, to, of tomorrow. Got to do it. We've got yeah. to keep the supply line coming through. Are you still playing? No, no, I haven't played, uh, I think, from... When did I stop playing? About six years ago? Ten? <laughs> Can't be ten. Ten? No. Uh, six, maybe six, yeah. Uh, could you trust yourself when you played? Uh, Will you want to lose your temper easily? No, no, not really. No, I could, I could tackle well. I've just, I, I've just had a full knee replacement. All right. Ah. You see it? Yeah, that's that's. It's no wonder you're not playing. Year. Yeah. Yeah. Just had a knee replacement, but uh, I tell you what, the most enjoyable years of my life, unbelievable. I miss it so much. The banter, yeah. the guys, and you know. Yeah. What, what was the what was the history with, beside your um, your team in LA, Rod? It almost became as as famous as the Harlem Globetrotters. Where did that all come from? Where was it born? Well, it, it, it was called the Exiles, and uh -huh. uh, when I first moved out there in uh, 1975, I was looking for a place to play football, and uh, a lot of us got together and started playing. Then we moved into a league. We all chipped <laughs> in and bought shirts. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger. So by the end, when we got to the the final of the All Americans Cup Amateur Cup, we had three internationals playing for us wow. that were playing for the USA. And that was around 19, uh, I think 1919, 1989. That must have been glorious for you, someone who enjoyed football as oh, much as you yeah. do. Yeah. But you only you only realise how glorious it was when you look back and look at old photos and you yeah. go. Oh my God! What I'd give to have that back, and you too, I bet, Andy. Eh? Have Listen, you played days back? I mean, give me one day, give me one day, give me one yeah. big game again. I take it for everyone. Yeah. Take the lot off yeah. me. Give me one big game. No, I can't work now until probably when we go down to New Zealand, and Australia in October, and then the the government have said, well, you can come down, but you may have to spend two weeks in a in a holiday inn out by the airport. I said, sod that, you know. But I'm I mean, really what? missing my work. Like everybody is. I was going to say, Rod, but we, we're in, a, in a, a, an area now where foot, we're talking about football going back and the lads are going to have to play if they do go back in Spain and Italy, Germany, the UK or England. They're going to have to play behind closed doors to empty stadiums. I mean, that's OK if you're a footballer, you're playing with your mates and it's a competitive game. But for someone like you, who feeds off 50,000, 20,000, 100,000, when do you imagine those times are, I'll be back for you as a performer? Well, to be honest, Andy, they made that, mate. You know, um, I can't see when there's going to be 50,000 in a football stadium, let alone yeah, uh, for yeah. a concert. Yeah. You know, certainly not this year, probably halfway through next year. And, you know, we may never find a cure for this horrible disease. Um, it's tragic, it really is. Mm. It's all happened so suddenly. You know, mm. suddenly we're all under lock and key. We have to stay in. It's unbelievable. I suppose As I say, I I'm so lucky. Yeah, I, I think that's probably what I meant, Rob, when I said, how's it been locked down for you? Because you can't work either. And that's the most frustrating part of life, isn't it? Everybody wants it. Andy and I have yeah. been lucky. We found a way to continue. But, but that's the most frustrating part. You can't. You perform. Yeah. And yeah, you're no, not I able can't. to do that I mean, right now. Well, I am, I am working on an album, but it's... Uh, you know, it's a, it's an album about all my favourite love songs, whether they be country, whether they whatever they are, and we're managing to do that. But it's it's a, it's a laboured process, you know, because we can't have musicians in the same room, so it all has to be at a distance, and it's very technical, and I won't try to explain it. How is your music these days? You 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 the what you like to do? You know, you you, you start as a, a young rocker. We remember that way back in the seventies. Then there's there's the the Rod Stewart songbooks, and all the more softer music. Do you have a preference, Rod? 
No, 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 I don't. I don't. I love music. I love all sorts of music. You know, the, the album I'm making now contains um, a lot of country songs. I think are absolutely beautiful. Uh, I love the standards. Uh, I love. I love. Blue. God has given me um, a gift, a voice that can express any genre. You know, any yeah. style of music. Yeah. I can. Can't do opera, but otherwise, <laughs> it's. it's I'm, I'm just very lucky. Yeah. Well, thank goodness he did, and. Um, we thank you for your time and everybody that helped make this possible, Rod. Can I just was ask one it? thing, Rod, before Rod goes? That's yeah, it wasn't nearly. Okay, I wanted to see, today, Rod, when I knew you were coming on, obviously I've got on to social, the Spotify, whatever it's called, other avenues are available. <laughs> right, right. And I've, I've gone down the Rod Stewart's Greatest Hits because I'm a bit, we're big fans, you know that. And my favourite yeah. song isn't on that album, Greatest Hits. Go on. My what song is it? Mandolin Wind. When the rain came, I, I thought you'd, you'd leave. Because I knew how much you loved the sun. Love it. It's not yeah, on it. That's it. Good. I used to play on stage, but, you know, I've got so many songs to play. <laughs> is, is Where that, are you now? In Doha? Is it, we're, yes. we, we, we're in Doha, yes. We also, have a, we also have here a memento of the last occasion that we saw you, which Andy has kept very proudly and yeah. is frustrated by every time he looks at. Yeah, because when you did your gig in Abu Dhabi, Rod, then Richard and I came to see you. And I remember you gave me this ball with a little chuckle, a little mischievous yeah. grin on your face that says to Andy, <laughs> six, six in a row. And I took it off you with this and I said, yes, Mr. Stewart, but don't think that ball will ever say nine in a row. <laughs> oh my God. Now Andy, you should find that nine in a row and send it back to me. <laughs> Can they make it 10? No, no. I tell you, it's going to be a struggle. It'll be a bloodbath because I know Rangers are going to put up some sort of fight. I uh, just see that Andy, they've lost Halliday and a few other players. Oh, have they? Hope oh, they're wow, going to right. replace. Oh, you've really cheered me up tonight. Thanks very much, pal. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just about to go and have the first one of the day. Good right. Well, en en enjoy that. I have to. Oh, a couple of people have been in touch. Andy and I are going to be talking to Jurgen Klinsmann on Monday. Yeah. I, I spoke to him tonight and said he'll be following royalty. He said, saw him in LA two years ago, please pass on my best. The reason I tell the story is, it's remarkable how many times I've been in the company of rock star and footballer, and I'm thinking specifically Collins and Dalgleish. And you know what? They're, they're so much in awe of each other, they don't even talk. John Collins. Is that Phil Collins <laughs> and Kenny? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just got that one, sorry, lads. <laughs> Uh, uh, and you've got to do me a favour. You'll uh, through through the years, the guy that used to do my job and did it better and, and was the first doing it, Elton Wellsby, whose son Chris works with us. Rod, uh, he's he's got an auntie that follows you everywhere and just <laughs> wanted you to say, if you'd be so kind, hello to Barbara Pickervance. Is that possible? Yeah, of course, Barbara Pickervance. Hello, darling. Hopefully, to see you out on tour when we start touring again. Love you. Top man. She'll be there, and I, I, it's on, honestly brilliant, Rod. Thank you so much. And as I said earlier, right, to everybody Anytime, involved, guys. Thanks, Rod. Really Top good. Man. Thank you, you very much. By the way, stay safe. Stay safe. Get off. Get off. Cut him off. Cut. What a life. What honestly, a life. What a life. Would you have given up your career for football? <laughs> no chance. Would you? Would you rather have been a rock? No. Star? No. You, see, I think. I should have tailored the question a little bit more because he's still singing at over 70. He's still doing what he loves. Yes. You know, I couldn't, yeah, yeah, play, I couldn't do what I loved after 35. That was gone. Mm. So I get the longevity of the career he chose to be a rock star. But I wonder if you'd have said to him, you know, from 17, Rod, to 35, you could be equally as good a footballer as you were a rock star. Then after 35, become a singer. He could have had yeah, both worlds. that wasn't the choice. No, he could have had both worlds. What if he could have been like... Ronaldo mm. up to 35 and then being Rod Stewart after with his, 35. With his broken, I just thought it was surgery, but obviously it got done. It got, it got done. <laughs> it so done. you missed your opportunity. You got very, very close. I, I thought we were heading for something really special there. Um, I think he was worried about the tone of my voice. Yeah. Would you like to sing <laughs> us out? No, no. No, I'm serious. No, I'm not going to sing you. Mandolin yet. wind. Well, when the rains came, I thought you'd leave because I knew how much you loved the sun. Very but good. you chose to stay, we stay and keep me warm. Jürgen Klinsmann amongst our guests cries. next week. Join I've us Monday, all over the world. No mandolin Keys wins, and gray. never changed a thing. And I know I love you.